Excel tutorial Auto Regressive Integrated Moving Average Models. Auto Regressive Integrated Moving Average or RMA models consist of specifying conditional mean of a process. They are stochastic or random models specified as some of the deterministic simple or multiple linear relationships with lag level or differentiated dependent or explained variables, stochastic or random simple or multiple nonlinear relationships with lag level or differentiated model errors, and a constant mean or drift. This topic is part of Advanced Forecasting Models with Excel Curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. An example of ARMA models is the differentiated first-order autoregressive model, which consists of difference forecast equal to deterministic simple linear relationship with previous period data difference plus a constant drift. Its ARMA notation has one autoregressive order, one order of differentiation or integration, and zero moving average order. Notice that this ARMA is with a constant. As a formula, Current period forecast is equal to a constant drift plus previous period's data plus an autoregressive coefficient multiplied by the difference between previous periods minus second previous period's data. Great, so let's go into our Excel file so that we can study differentiated first order autoregressive model with greater detail. Excellent. So here we are within ARMA Models Worksheet. The first step is we'll be working within ARMA Training Worksheet and what we'll be doing is the estimation of this ARMA Models parameters. As we can see at column B we have dates and at column C we have the data. As this is training range we have as first date the beginning of 2007 and if we press Ctrl down arrow, we go all the way to the end of this training range, which is the end of 2013, therefore the first seven years of data for the training range. So again, we press Ctrl up arrow, down arrow, we go into the beginning of the time series. Data corresponds to SPY adjusted close prices. SPY is the ETF investment vehicle which intends to replicate the Standard & Poor's 500 index and adjusted close prices because they were adjusted for dividends and splits. Notice that the training range data has a green color background to differentiate it from the testing range data we'll study later on. This data has a daily frequency. The next step is we are going to calculate the data differences. For that, as we can see, the first cell here, D7, has a different color background than the rest of the column. The reason for that is to highlight a different calculation within it to the rest of the column. So if we select D7, we see that the value is just a zero. So from D8 onwards, we see that the calculation of differentiated data is equal to C8, which is current period data, minus C7, which is previous day's data, and so on for the rest of the column. With this differentiated data, we're able to calculate this ARMA model's parameters or coefficients. As we can see within its ARMA notation, it has one autoregressive order, one order of differentiation or integration, C removing average order, and C because it has a constant drift. So as mentioned, with this differentiated data, we can calculate the two parameters, which are the constant drift and the autoregressive coefficient. This is done through a linear regression. That linear regression has as dependent or explained variable current period data differences, therefore from D8 all the way to the end of the time series as dependent or explained variable, and as independent or explanatory variable previous days differentiated data. So from D7, 
all the way into previous to last observation within this column. So with this corresponding coefficients, we'll be able to calculate the forecast which is done within training range. Notice that the first two cells again have a different color than the rest of the column. In this case, they are colored gray to distinguish their calculation to the rest of the column. So if we select E7, we see that it's equal to C7, the actual data, and similar for E8 with its corresponding row, which is the calculation as C8 or the actual data at that row. Notice that this corresponding initial values assumption as being equal to the actual data was included for educational purposes, therefore it can be modified according to your needs. From the next row onwards, by selecting here cell E9, we see the calculation as follows. It is equal to E2 with a dollar sign before the column and the row, meaning that we have fixed that cell. E2 is the constant drift, and that is done so that we can copy the formula all the way down, plus C8, which is previous period theta, plus E3, which is the autoregressive coefficient, also fixed, multiplied by the difference between C8, which is previous period data, minus C7, which is second previous period data, and so on for the rest of this column. Then we have forecasting errors or residuals. For example, here we select F7, and it's equal to C7, the actual data, minus E7, which is the forecasted data, and the same for the rest of the column. So as mentioned, we are doing those corresponding parameters estimation within the training range, and we did so at cells E2 and E3. So now we can continue within ARMA testing worksheet. Within ARMA testing, now we are working within the testing range. That's why we have data with a blue color background. For the calculation of the forecast we will be doing with this testing range, we are using the parameters previously estimated within the training range. So if we select here, for example, D2, we see that it's equal to the RMA training E2. And then if we select D3, it's equal to RMA training worksheet E3. So now data goes. As we can see here, by selecting the first cell within dates, B7, from the beginning of 2014, and if we press Ctrl down arrow, it goes all the way to the end of 2015, therefore the last two years of data. So again, we press Ctrl up arrow and down arrow. An important observation about the delimiting of training and testing ranges is also that it was done as an example for educational purposes, therefore it can also mo be modified according to your needs. So in this case, we'll be doing a multi-step forecast. The multi-step forecast is done at the beginning of the testing range for the full testing range in advance using the parameters previously estimated within the training range and without using any of the testing range data. Therefore, we have the first two calculations with cells with a different color to the rest of the column and also different colors between them. So let's go ahead and see the calculation of each of them. At D7, when we select it, we see that it's equal to D2, the constant drift, plus previous periods data. But in this case, as previous periods data, we're using the last observation within ARMA training at C1768. And then we have plus D3, which is the autoregressive coefficient, multiplied by the difference between the last observation, again within ARMA training, C1768, which is previous periods data, minus second previous periods data, which is also within ARMA training, C1767, so one row above. So going into ARMA training, as mentioned, at column C, so we select C7 and we press Ctrl down arrow, and we go all the way to the end of this time series and we see the last observation has been row 1768 and the previous to last row, the 1767. Therefore, we're using as previous periods data this observation here and as second previous periods data this observation right over here. So going back into ARMA testing, 
once we've done the calculation at d7, we can continue with d8. So within d8, we see that it's equal to d2, which is the constant drift, plus previous periods data. But notice that in this case, previous periods data, we are using previous periods forecast, plus d3, which is the autoregressive coefficient, multiplied by the difference between previous periods data, which again, we're using d7, which is previous periods forecast, minus second previous periods data, and in this case, we're using the last observation within our ARMA training worksheet at C1768. From the next row onwards, which is a D9, we see the calculation as follows. It's equal to D2, which has been fixed, and that's the constant drift, plus previous periods data, but in this case, we're using previous periods forecast, plus D3, which is the autoregressive coefficient, multiplied by the difference between D8, which is previous periods data, but we're using previous periods forecast, minus D7, second previous periods data, which in this case, we're using second previous periods forecast, and so on for the rest of this column. And then we have forecasting errors or residuals, again, as the difference between column C, in this case, C7, actual data, minus D7, which is the forecasted data. And the last step we're doing within this tutorial is to go into ARMA chart worksheet. Within ARMA chart worksheet, we are going to visualize this corresponding multi-step forecast together with the actual data. So within this chart, we have the differentiated first order autoregressive with its ARMA model notation. And then we have at the vertical axis, those adjusted close prices, horizontal one dates, from the beginning of 2014 all the way to the end of 2015, therefore the testing range. And here, as we can see, according to their legend, colored in blue, that's the actual data. And then in orange, we have the multi-step forecast. This was done at the beginning of the testing range for the full testing range in advance, using the parameters we previously estimated within the training range, and without using any data from this testing range. Excellent. So now that we've finished studying differentiated first order autoregressive model, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.